Why does a Mormon feel like they can't ask any questions? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. And today we have a gentleman, a young man, all the way from Tennessee, Ian Gubley. Did I say it right? Yeah, you did. Good. Okay. Hey, it's nice to have you here. You're on vacation out here. Yes. I understand your family. Where were you born? I was born in uh, Georgia. Oh, were you? Uh, the more, more part of my childhood was spent in Colorado. Oh, okay. Um, and then... All my teenage adolescence was in Utah. Down in Gunnison. Gunnison. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born. So uh, we had kind of a connection. We <laughs> just found out, world. didn't we? Yeah. That's awesome. And you know many of the people I know and mm -hmm. I'm related to down there. So that's neat. How long were you in Gunnison? Uh, after high school you left? Or? Yeah, after high school. Uh, I probably spent more of that summer vacation uh, just hanging around. And then I moved to New Jersey. Oh, um, with the family? No. Uh, mm -hmm. My brother was out there. He was working oh. for Vivint. And oh. I got a job with Vivint, and oh. uh, we just installed solar panels. How about that? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hard work. <laughs> Scary up there on the roofs. Huh? Oh, yeah, especially when we'd go to Maryland because we call it the training ground because yeah. it's just really tall houses, oh. really steep pitches. <laughs> I would never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd last too long with that. <laughs> now, your family, are they, um, were they always Mormon, or do you recall? Yeah, yeah. Um, as long as I've been alive. Family history, yeah. As long as I've been alive. My dad was raised in it. Uh, okay. He was born in Gunnison as well, okay. but he was raised in West Valley. Um, born and raised Mormon. My mom was born with no religion at all. Oh. I, and you kind of find that odd because it's, you know, she was born in Georgia, raised in Georgia. You would think in the South she'd be Christian, but yeah. her family... So, so dad and mom got together and she converted her to Mormonism then? She was... Yeah, uh, it was kind of weird because my dad, he left the church when he was 17 and he, he, um, he was gone for about 10 years. Oh. Um, he lived a life completely for himself. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that he <laughs> won't discuss. Has repented of. <laughs> yes, won't discuss in those years. But when he met my mom and they started dating and then um, got married... She told him, I want my kids to be raised with religion, the opportunity that, you know, yeah. she never got. Yeah. And so my dad figured, well, there's only one religion I know, and I know Mormonism and I, I know that uh, it's a good family yeah. oriented. And so how many how yeah. many kids? Do you have brothers and sisters? I have one older sister uh -huh. and I have one older brother. Oh, okay. Both of them return missionaries as well. And so now you, and then your dad became very active, temple worker you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I think, earlier. Hey, so um did you were you active then your whole youth and in um, the different places you were at? On the records, I was okay. because I would go every Sunday. Sure. Um, but inwardly, no, not at all. Really? Um, I mean, as a kid, I just kind of went because it's it's the family thing to do. Expected to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like, oh, you go if if you don't, you get grounded or something, you <laughs> yeah, know. Right. But uh, we come to Utah, and the house is literally right across the street from the church. Something I've never known before. Yeah. And so I figured, hey, after sacrament meeting, I could just slip home. I could just ditch, ditch on out of here. And so I, that's what I started doing. Um, and I don't know, from, from 12 is really when things started changing for me. Um, because I'm in this Mormon culture. I'm surrounded by, you know, I went from a school where I was one of two Mormons in Colorado, and then we moved to Utah, and now I'm in a school where there's only two non-Mormons. <laughs> right. you know, it's just, it's a completely different culture. And um, I started asking questions when I became a deacon, um, because... What kind of questions? Like very, I mean, soul-searching questions like, does God exist? Oh. You know, very important questions <laughs> that a person needs to answer, because, you know, those men stand around you and they put their hands on your head, and they say your name, and they say, by the authority of such and such priesthood, we, yeah, yeah. you're a deacon now. Yeah. And it's like, I, at, at 12, I thought, you just gave a 12-year-old boy the power of God <laughs> to like act in his name. And I, I thought that was the strangest thing. So it's like, is the priesthood real? Wait, is God real? 
And I just started going down the, the wow. chain of soul-searching questions. If I ever had those kinds of questions, I, they didn't raise to the level of, uh, <laughs> of being acknowledged, I guess. I just, <laughs> you're more thoughtful, must be more mature than I was at that age. I just, it just penetrated my heart. And yeah. the thing is, I did nothing about it. Oh. You know, 12-year-old boy kind of wants, wants to just go and do his own thing. Now, did you actually ask somebody these questions? Mm -mm. Oh. You know, I had a bishop. Uh, obviously, I had a bishop. Yeah. I had youth leaders. I had my parents. Yeah. I had every family member on my dad's side I could go talk to, but I didn't talk to anybody. I just kind of kept it inside. Yeah. Um, and they just festered over years until it just became a frustration and anger, really. In your teenage years? or mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember... 16 is really when I started getting militant <laughs> about, like, I don't believe this now, stuff. Now did you share this with mom and dad? Or? Yes, actually. Um, what happened then? It was really uh, the only thing me and my parents ever fought about. Militant. <laughs> Maybe that's not the <laughs> yeah, best word. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. Yeah. But, um, Vocal, for sure, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I started really fighting against church. You know, uh, they made me a priest somehow. You know, I'd said yes to all those interview questions. <laughs> like every man does, and they just lie about it. But I would bless the sacrament, and then I'd leave as soon as the sacrament was passed. I would go home. So I'd go to church maybe 15 minutes a week. Um, now, not to put you on the spot, but hmm. did you feel like a hypocrite at all at this juncture? I mean, you're oh, yeah. living one way and kind of thinking another, maybe? And, yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt like a total hypocrite. Yeah. But uh, don't... I, I, Looking back, even my whole life, it, there seems to be this diversion or this hypo hypocrisy. You're so young still, but you felt that definitely, I yeah. guess. Huh? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, we'd, I'd go to seminary class, and I remember as a senior in high school, I was convinced that I was like an atheist, sat Satanist, like I, because I listened to some crazy heavy metal music, so I thought, this is some... This isn't the philosophy that I want as my lifestyle, my worldview. Stupid. But that's what I used in seminary. And I, I remember just, I would throw a question out there that was pretty anti-religion in general, not necessarily against Mormonism. To the teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who actually was my bishop. Oh. I would throw a question out there. And then the other agnostic frustrated youth would just jump on it like dogs and, and just fan the fire and it just, it would you enjoyed Recap. that yeah I, I would just sit I can back tell. <laughs> I would just sit back and go yeah my work is my work is done you know because I would ask questions like well God doesn't have a beginning and he doesn't have an end yeah so he doesn't exist and the other kids would be like yeah yeah answer that and a poor I mean honestly poor man he had to deal with so much crap yeah but um that's that's where I got to the the height of my my anger against just religion in general as a teenager because of those questions not being answered. So I guess the big question is, how did you end up on a mission? <laughs> Funny story. So because I moved to New Jersey with my brother, um, I was rooming with five return missionaries. Oh, boy. And they were just like, oh, you're going on a mission? You're going on a mission? I like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going on a mission because I, uh, the summer before I moved out there, I had a, what I would consider my first spiritual experience. Um, summer is the farewell season, right? right? Just kids coming straight out of high school, I'm going on a mission. And you just, you know, instead of going to church with my parents like they were trying to force me to, I just said, I'm going to farewells. And they were like, fine, go to farewells. And so uh, I remember <laughs> there was one day, two kids that I graduated with were giving farewells on the same day and leaving that same Wednesday. Oh. Different missions, but, yeah. um, and I, I went to the first one, and it was the, the usual, I know the church is true, I thank my coaches, I thank my parents, sobbing, and it's just like, I know what kind of kid you were, you're lying to everybody, but, you know, I just sat there and Whatever. did my tongue. He's repented. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> repented. Yeah. He just confessed. Um, and then I went to the second one, and it was the same thing. Like, how can you just lie to everybody? All your family, your friends are here. You're just lying to all these people. And then everything went quiet. Like quiet to the point where 
I didn't hear the little baby fidgeting behind me with a toy. Um, I didn't hear the couple whispering. Just in your own mind and yeah. heart, everything went quiet. Yeah, it was as if all I could hear was like my blood pumping. Yeah. It was so quiet. And then a voice came into my head and I knew it wasn't my own voice, but it sounded like my own voice. And it just said, you're going to serve a mission. And I didn't, you know, you would think I'd be like, you're crazy, voice in my head. But I was like, hmm, hmm. okay. Didn't think about it since though, you know. And so when I move in with the, all these return missionaries, they're like, are you going on a mission? Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I didn't tell anybody about this experience, you know, just kind of held it in like, that was odd. Yeah. Um, and we, I lived in New Jersey for about nine months. And we got the call from Vivint saying, hey, we're opening up a Utah, opening up a Utah office. You guys can Come be on. the guys that open it up. Yeah. Oh, sweet, we're going home. You know, so we go home, and as soon as my feet hit the soil of Utah, I was like, I'm going to talk to my bishop. Don't know where it came from. Don't know why, but it happened. And I notified him, and uh, a few months go by, we're just kind of discussing, because he was really hesitant. <laughs> he remembered the seminary Ian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he didn't know what the postgraduate Ian was like, but um, we worked through some stuff, and eventually I got called to Tennessee. Okay. And... Um, Man, that, I, honestly, I don't regret the mission. Um, well, especially as, as the story will unfold here. But Exactly. Uh, how, what did you think of your mission in, in terms of before, the, toward the end, but did you feel like you were representing Jesus or the church or Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon? What, hmm. what do you feel like you were preaching? It seemed as if each area progressively added everything that you just mentioned um, because my sole intent on serving a mission, and I told the congregation that I gave the farewell to, like, my, I don't know any of this is true, which, you know, that's a red flag for that's Bishop. Honest. Yep. They're like, wait, what, you don't know this? But I didn't, and I told them that. Like, I don't know any of this is true. That's why I'm going. I'm going to find out. Mm. And, and, you know, I get there. I get in the field, and I start reading the Book of Mormon. I read it in three weeks, Yeah. and I thought, that was good. That was a good story. I'm yeah. going to read it again. Prayed about it. Mm -hmm. Prayed about it. And then I didn't really feel anything. Didn't really think anything. It's like, I'm just going to keep reading it. Um, and it seemed as if each area just, uh, what I thought, strengthened my testimony. Yeah. You know, and I just thought, yeah, this is, this is totally true. And I, and I climbed the ranks of mission leadership and just became this this theologian, I mean, because that's all I did. I just devoted my life to the scriptures as a missionary because that's the first thing that I gained faith in. Um, what did you think of Jesus at this point? I, I thought he was the Messiah. I really did. I thought he was... Your elder brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Older oh, brother. I thought yeah. he was the created son of God. Created son, yeah. I, I thought he was okay. Jehovah, not Elohim. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe those doctrines because I read Jesus the Christ and I read... The King Follett sermon, which I was shocked that most missionaries don't even read that. <laughs> I just found it by accident in a, in a ward council, sitting there, my companions jabbing away about whatever we were doing that week. And I'm on my iPad and I see King Follett part one. Like, okay. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I just started studying that and like, whoa, I thought, God is a man. This is so true. But I never thought to look in the scriptures to see if it was true or not. <laughs> it was true there. <laughs> it's like, oh, Joseph Smith said so. Like, yeah, it's yeah, true. Of it's totally true. Yeah. Um, but I always found myself going back to Scripture, even the Bible. Um, really? You, you remember reading the Bible much? And yeah. Uh, there was one area, uh, Chattanooga. It is filled with Seventh-day Adventists. Oh. And it, it almost seemed like every other door you knock on, you're going to meet a Seventh-day. Hmm. And I was with a very, I don't know how to describe him. <laughs> he wasn't your usual missionary. We were very unorthodox together. We weren't, you know, we have to obey every single rule. We have to do this, this, and that. We were very, let's go to the churches to try to convert people. Let's go to the Seventh-day College and, and go on campus and try to convert people. Um, so you went to some Christian churches. Yeah. What did you think of that when you... The first, oh man, the first church I remember going to is Cloud Springs Baptist Church in... Uh, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and it seemed as if the guy talking was trying to yell at us, 
And so I was kind of very angry. Because you had your name tags? and mm-hmm. Okay. I, I couldn't convince my companion to go incognito. <laughs> so uh, we went full, full regalia. Yeah. And... So you felt like he was talking right to you. Yeah, and it's like, oh my gosh, this guy's yelling at me. Like now, do I, they have a music and the mm-hmm. words up on the screen and all <laughs> yeah. that stuff? And I thought that was odd. It's like, why yeah. are we using it from hymnals? Like, you know, but <laughs> Where's our books? <laughs> yeah, naive little little Mormon missionary. But uh, I was uncomfortable. It seemed as if each church that I went to, especially the Catholic church, I was very uncomfortable with it all, because it's like, this isn't what I'm used to. Right. I like the quiet, reverent. So you're you looking know. for investigators, I guess, or people yeah. that would at least come up and talk to you. And stuff. Yeah, okay. we would We would want people to be like, what are you guys doing here? And Oh, <laughs> here's a pamphlet, here's Book of Mormon. You know, try to rope them in. Yeah. Uh, it never worked. <laughs> but with the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, my companion and I, we were blown away by how knowledgeable they were of the Bible. It was as if everything we said, they were like, oh, the Bible says this about that. The Bible says this about that. And we were like, dude. We, we don't know the Bible. <laughs> we don't know the Bible at all. We need to read it. And so we actually started studying the New Testament together. Mm-hmm. And we would notice <clears throat> that we started kind of putting the Book of Mormon away as we would read together. And we would find ourselves in the middle of working, like trying to track or go street contacting or even during appointments or after appointments. We would find each other looking at each other like, we just want to go home and read scripture. <laughs> the and Bible. We, huh? Yeah, and we just felt like... That's amazing. Yeah, and, and we grew in such, in such faith and testimony about the Bible, because like, this is the Word of God, because we were just reading about the life of Jesus. We weren't reading about Jesus coming to some supposed Indians. Yeah. Uh, we were reading the true and living Savior, healing people, teaching the most beautiful words. The Sermon on the Mount is still my, my all-time favorite. Yeah sermon ever. Yeah. Um, well, so did you, uh, you finish your mission, of mm-hmm. course. I mean, you have a testimony of the church all the way through this. Yes. Okay. Now, I don't know where we want to introduce uh, Ashlyn in here, if at all, but yeah. is that part of your story here, or should we just move on to your born-again kind of experience and all? She's, uh, she's definitely an important part. Okay. Um, I met Ashlyn seven months before going home. Okay. I'm a zone leader at this point. Uh, I have to train missionaries. I have to yeah. teach them in the ways of obedience. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I meet this amazing girl, this Christian, faithful Christian, um, and we would have discussions. Uh, I met her through a mutual friend. He was a priest in the ward, um, and he just inter- introduced us at IHOP one day, <laughs> and um, we started talking. I wasn't supposed to be talking to her. No, but your I, companion was there. Yeah, my companion was there. Okay. He met her as well. Um, but her and I started texting and corresponding oh. via email and stuff. And so I was breaking some big, big rules. But in the beginning, it wasn't like, oh, I like you. Oh, I no. like you. It was just like, who is Jesus to you? Like, we would have conversations. Um, and the, the last few months of my mission, I, I would try to kind of sneak little tidbits of Mormonism in there. Yeah. yeah. Like try to do it via the Bible sometimes. Like, oh, the Bible says this. Give her a wrong interpretation of the text, obviously. <laughs> Baptism for the dead or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, like, oh, there's the one verse. It's yeah. ambiguous. But, um, and so uh, I went home and we were dating. I actually, the last night of my mission, uh, we... I took another missionary. We actually snuck up to Oak Ridge, where she lives. Somehow I got sent back to Knoxville, which I thought was a con- t- total blessing <laughs> um, because they're like 15 minutes apart. And um, we actually went to her house, and her family fed us dinner, and I actually asked her parents if I could date her. Still a uh, set-apart missionary. And they somehow, by the grace of God, said, no. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And it's like, okay, sweet. And you're going home the next day? <laughs> yeah. I went home the next day. Just stuck me on a plane, went to Utah, and three weeks later, I flew back out to visit her, and um, I went to her church. That was the start of troubles for us, because I was like, I'm going to be an institute director. Like, that's what I wanted to do, because I had such a love for Scripture that I, I just wanted to teach from scripture the rest of my life. Seminary Institute teacher or something. Yeah. Okay. And so I was 
I wasn't one of those missionaries that came home and just left it all yeah. behind me. Like I left the mission behind me, but I, didn't, I did not set those scriptures down. And so I went to her church with her, and I lied to her that I enjoyed my experience there. <laughs> she would ask me, like, oh, what did you think? And her mom was like, could you see yourself going to a church like that? And In the back of your mind, no way. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> heck no, you guys are going to be Mormons by the end of this. You know, I thought I was going to get them all. Um, and so when I went home, I remember it was a Sunday, and I don't know why I was in, at church. But she had just come out of church, and I asked her, oh, how was church? And she was like, amazing. This is like where I need to be. And then I, I think I just ripped into her. I ripped into her for it. Um, and I, I truly regret that because now I'm a, I'm a part of that church. I'm a member at that church. But um, <laughs> that was the start of the, the problems for us. And, you know, because I thought I'd found God. I'd convinced myself that I found God. The Book of Mormon was true. Joseph mm -hmm. Smith was sure. to a total prophet. And, um, and I found out he wasn't. And, and here's how I found out he wasn't. Yeah, tell us this. Months, months of agonizing with each other over doctrine, over all these stupid, meaningless things. Um, I eventually moved to Tennessee, I, like move, move there in the summer of 2018. And I, I'd, I'd found something on YouTube. It was like a PBS documentary of the church. And President Oaks said something that completely, it started the snowball effect for me. He said, it is wrong to criticize the leaders of the church, even if that criticism is true. <laughs> and I, I stopped. I, I paused the video and I, th I thought, wait. What did he say? <laughs> are you serious? And I rewound it and rewound it and I thought, what if my concern is from the scriptures though? You know, it's like, what if what I'm criticizing you for is for not interpreting or teaching me from the scriptures correctly? From the Word of God, is, is, are you still right and I'm still in the wrong? And it just started this, I just started, I noticed that I stopped picking up the Book of Mormon and I just completely devoted myself to the Bible. Um, and and I, would, I, I found this um, YouTube channel called Apologia Studios, if mm -hmm. you've ever heard of it. Um, it's an Arizona-based uh, Out church. of Arizona, a, mm -hmm. Apologia or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know that one. And I would watch this pastor talk to Mormon missionaries, talk to Mormons at the temple, and I, I would remember hearing his doctrines and thinking, I believe that. <laughs> I've read that somewhere. And he would quote the verse like, yeah, I, I, that's in the Bible. And I was, just, I was blown away, and I was just so touched and moved by what he was saying. And, and so when I'm in Tennessee, it was like I was two different people. The Mormon was trying to fight against the wannabe Christian. Yeah. Just like, no, you know this is true. You know you should, you know you should stick to this. This is the truth. The Spirit told you it was. But then the wannabe Christian's like, there's no freaking way. <laughs> this can't be it. And so um, what I did, I eventually just denounced it out of nowhere. It's like, the you church. know what? Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be a Mormon anymore. I'm sick of this confusion. But what, nothing specific prompted that? Just No. The only thing I can think of is the, the spirit just in my head. Now, it took you two years to come to this conclusion. Yeah. Right? You and Ashlyn battled a little bit yeah. over time. and I mean, she was, she would read the King Follett's. She wasn't going to become Mormon, it sounds like. Oh, no. And, and you weren't going to become Christian, at least initially. Yeah. And... And literally, it was out of nowhere. I just felt, no, I can't be a Mormon anymore. Was there anything specific? Well, I would hang out with the missionaries and... I mean, the Bible obviously meant a lot. Did you, did you come to know who Jesus was? Yeah, I started... Had you understood grace before? I started studying the Trinity. Yeah. And that really kind of did it for me. Yeah. It's like, whoa, Jesus is God? <laughs> Who knew? It's like, what? They don't, they don't talk about this. It's so plain. Even though it's in the Bible. <laughs> it's right there. The Word is God. Yeah. That's, what it's, that's what it would say. Yeah. The fullness of deity dwells inside of Christ. And it's like, you're kidding me. God stepped into creation. And it's not the Son of God. It's not the creation of God suffering for the creation of God. <laughs> Blew my mind. But I, would, I was hanging out with the missionaries. And I remember what really just like kind of threw me over there. It's like, I'm not doing this anymore was there was a, a young missionary that I'd become friends with um, and he was like, Ian, I think I understand grace. Like, 
Well, I didn't understand grace until I was like halfway done. How are you already doing this four weeks in? You know, I was kind of jealous, but whatever. And he read this Tadar Collister thing about grace where Elder Collister says, we know that works can't get you into heaven. Works can't save you. It's only by the grace of God that you're saved, but works make you eligible oh. for the grace. And he was like, isn't that amazing? Like, I get it. And I found myself, and it had to be the Spirit filling my mouth, I found myself saying, but Ephesians, Paul says it's a gift. <laughs> like, Elder, Web, Elder Weber, do you work for a gift? And he was like, Duh. <laughs> no, I guess you don't. <laughs> you don't earn grace. And I just thought, man, I can't be in a church that, that thinks you earn something. How have, been, how have I been so blind? I know. And so I just, I left. And about two months go by and I'm just studying and studying and studying about the Trinity. And I really just feel, man, I know God. I know who He is now. I, I finally understand that, that Jesus is my creator. He's not, he's not a creation. He's always existed. He'll always exist. And He loves me. Yeah. And something happened between me and Ashton. I mean, it's pretty personal, and so I probably yeah. won't go into it, but yeah. it brought me to a, a real, my first real um, repentance experience. Hmm. It actually, and, and, and when I confessed to, to Ashlyn everything that had been going on, it, it was as if I had confessed to God. And the next day was the first Sunday of of December. So, you know, Christmas sermons. And just last sermon. year, right? Yeah, this is yeah. just last year. And it, it seemed as if every single song was like, there's name, there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he can break every chain. I was like, oh my gosh. I, was, I found myself weeping during everything during worship. And then the sermon comes and you'd think it'd be like, oh, just the birth of Jesus. That's yeah. what we're celebrating. But no, it was like, like he related me to the shepherds, like come to God as you are. Right? You're being drawn. Come to Him as you are. And then He related me to the wise don't men. Don't you love that? I love that. Come as you are. Come as you are. You don't have to perfect yourself to mm -mm. come to Him. Is that so, it's so unique. It's so free. Yeah, I know it. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. And then He related me to the wise men. He said, they came because they followed a sign. They verified that sign by a scripture. And they left a different way. Leave a different person. And I thought, Oh, that's, okay. That's fantastic. And so I went to the altar and I was saved <laughs> and I was baptized in February and now I'm at Liberty University getting an apologetics really? degree. Oh, yeah. good for you. Theology and apologetics, and, learning the truth. And really quickly, unfortunately, we're out of time, but you are, uh, are wanting to start a college age ministry. People, yes. To, to college age people. Mm hmm. Now, you've probably run across, like you said, missionaries and Morm uh, Mormons and all, and you're trying to share with them this good news. There Tell us news. a little bit about that real quickly, or what your hopes are. Yeah, our hopes for that, Ashton and I, uh, we, were, we feel called uh, just to be missionaries. And the pastor of our church, he actually has an opportunity to minister to so many college kids because he owns a... Uh, a building in an apartment complex that houses the athletes of oh. uh, a community college nearby. And he's, he's wanting us to start small groups there. Um, kind of started off really easy, you know, just food and hang out, but eventually, Good. you know, Bible study and... and really help, help people. Yeah. And we're going to start a, a college age um, class at church because, you know, that's the age where people start kind of drifting off from church, no matter what religion you are. Yeah. And, and if we start a college age group, um, we can retain a lot of people and actually build the kingdom. And, and we, we just feel so, so moved for our age group and, and obviously we feel so much sympathy for, um, for Mormons. Let me ask you, you uh, got that little message at some point that says you're going to on a mission. Mm -hmm. Do you see God's hand in that now? I do. You've met Ashlyn. You've turned your life around to Christ. Yeah, and, I didn't realize that this was going to be the mission. <laughs> and that's probably God had said, well, it's, you know, I've got plans for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been f five years almost since that initial, oh since that spiritual experience. Yeah.
Anything last minute maybe that you'd like to say to family, friends that uh, might be listening to this? Oh man, the thing I could say of utmost importance is that Jesus Christ suffered on a cross for sin according to scripture. Yeah. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. And that is all you need. He said, it is finished. When he said, it is finished, it's, you finished. Don't, it's finished. You don't need to do anything. You can't add to what he's done. You can't take away from what he's done. Right. All, he, all he says is, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Come to me. When God draws you, realize that he's planted seeds of faith in you that you couldn't plant in yourself. And that God is trying to do a work in you. And that, that listen, listening to the Spirit isn't feeling the Spirit. No. It's not feeling the Spirit. Listening to the Spirit is, is recognizing that Jesus is the Christ. And there's such a freedom and a liberty and, mm -hmm. and you want to do good works. Yes. Not be to save yourself or yeah. to earn credit with God, but because you love Him. and I love Him and yeah. I want to, to pay my gratitude and, and I, yeah, I want to do good works because He's changed my heart. Yeah. <laughs> I want to reach out to people and I want to love them genuinely now because he's, he's made that desire, he's put that desire in me before I was just doing it out of a desire to please other people. Yeah. Well, I, for me, it's becoming a new creature. I'm sure mm -hmm. it certainly sounds like that for you too. Yeah. Ian, thanks so much for sharing. Thanks for coming out and sharing this story and uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the X-Mormon Files.